Hello, hello Capricorn. Welcome to your May 2020 overview reading. This is good for you if you're a sun, moon, or rising Capricorn. And before we get started, take a moment to subscribe to this channel if you haven't already. Go check me out on Instagram at Onyx Healing. I have all sorts of good stuff over on there for you. All of the other good stuff is in the description box. All of my classes, ways to work with me, anything your heart could desire lives in the description box. Check it out. I'm going to lay this spread out and then we will get started. Okay, let's start with your oracle cards this month. Water, emotions, allowing yourself to feel what you may have been ignoring or not processing. The emotional world matters. So this is speaking on two different levels. So one is obviously processing, doing your emotional work. The second level is manifestation. So remember that your emotions, your feelings are energetic currency. That doesn't mean that if you're processing emotions, bad things are going to happen, obviously, but it's about intentionally working on your energetic state. Okay, and then we also have the heart. Yep. So heart alignment, heart clarity, desires, this is all heart. Not only is it referring to your feelings, right, the being heart-centric, this also is like your your passions, your where where is your heart pulling you or leading you? And then we have expansion. More of your higher self is calling for expression, your capacity is growing, the horizon beckons. Oh, okay. What are you expanding into? What are you doing more of? It seems like you're you're expanding. And of course, like at this time, I feel like there are so many people who are in contraction and then there's a lot of people who are in expansion. So you might be feeling that rhythm for yourself as well. And the central energy for you is the tower. <laughs> that tower was full of black mold and cocaine thieving ghosts anyway. So this is kind of like, well, it wasn't working anyway. So it's probably best that you're out of it. The crossing energy is the five of wands. So problem solving, repairing things. I, I think you're just in adjustment mode. This is also, I think this is hilarious with the googly eyes. Can you see that? Obviously, when things shift out or when things move or when there's an interruption or a change or something, problem solving and rebuilding is also a part of that process. They they exist together. Your expansion is in whatever you're building. Because the tower is like destruction, wiping things out. And the five of wands is let's build it. Let's give energy to it again. Let's see what's shifting out for you. We have the star. So the, the good thing about this being in the shifting out position is it's like, this is what has led you into this. That's the good news is like, this is a part of alignment. This is a part of the path. This is a part of the soul's journey and the oncoming energy. It, yep. There you go. So the empress, self-care, self-love, mothering yourself, being good to yourself, being kind to yourself. And so I'm just getting this is like way more compassion and understanding and you being able to see the value in the whole picture. It's hard in in moments where things feel like they're they're being bro broken down. And then the outward manifestation is the four of wands. So it seems like there is a pull for you to be home in your nest. Th these came up for Taurus as well. But it's the, the home environment, your physical space really matters this month. Let me clarify what's going on with that. Two of Wands. It seems like it's a good environment to like plan. Because the Two of Wands is about like drawing up a map, planning for what's next. 
you know, putting things together. And I think your environment, make that conducive to your future goals. You know, make your environment conducive to planning. Make your environment conducive to feeling good. That way you can actually get your head straight and just feel like you're able to ground and do your best work. And then in the subconscious, we have the King of Pentacles. It's, you know, Sugar Daddy is what this guy's called apparently in this deck. So at the end of the day, the experience and the wisdom that you have is being able to build, is being able to overcome, is being challenged and just saying, yep, let's let's move through it anyway. So there's a lot of perseverance that's coming through this. There's a lot of stability and support because this is mastery over the material world and your sense of security. So regardless of the circumstances, regardless of the environment, that's not where stability comes from. There's an illusion that that's where it comes from, but the feeling of it, the feeling of the emotion is actually what creates it. I have clients who make millions and, and still deal with financial insecurity. It's not about the environment. So you, you really have to practice the feelings of what if this was already solved? What if this was already taken care of? What if I already had that money? How does it feel when money is coming in? Or how does it feel when I'm really supported and stable? You want to start asking those questions to inspire the feelings. And then the advice for you is the fool or the dumbass, as it's called in this deck. So you want to take a risk, I'm getting. Like, is there something that you've been wanting to try or experiment with or dabble around in? I think it's a good time for that. It's like try it out, shake things up, do something different. You already have the tower here in the center. So it's like, well, you may as well, you know, try something a bit more unconventional or something that's been sitting waiting for you, but maybe you didn't you didn't actually pick it up or something. It, it's like there's there's moving pieces and it's kind of like, well, if something is bottoming out, you may as well take a risk. Or if something isn't working or is being restructured, okay, then then take a risk. It's like there's there's actually lower stakes right now, which is pretty liberating for you. So I'm getting that that's kind of the mentality that you want to play with is like, okay, if I could do anything and I knew it wouldn't, like if I knew I couldn't fail, what type of action would I take? That, that kind of energy. The environment, Brad the manager, the chariot. This, this is showing me why you want to practice feelings of security and take aligned risk because things are going to move quickly. Not necessarily in May. There, there's something about this. You know what? Let me clarify this. But there's something about this card, the chariot, that is just screaming at me, you know, that this is going to move really quickly, but I'm getting that this might be post-May. It, of course... Time is a little bit more fluid, so some of you are going to be experiencing this at, at different stages. But let me clarify, we have the High Priestess. So if you're wondering, like, what is this? What is this fast-paced chariot energy in my environment? It's either something that you already know or whatever your gut hit, your intuitive hit on what this is. Th that's, that's what it's referring to. Or you need to go and meditate about it. Because sometimes the answer comes through just silence. And so the high priestess is sometimes like, nope, you need to go into meditation. You need to go ask about that. Or you need to go get clarity about that. So th that's always available to you. And then we have in the hopes and fears. This is the three of swords. Obviously, this is everyone's worst fear, right? Heartbreak, grief, things not working out, losing it all. That That's pretty much a collective fear. So it makes sense that this is coming up. You know, and there might, there might be some self-sabotage going on. As you're growing, are you sabotaging yourself? Are you like telling yourself nasty stories about how you can't do it or you can't achieve it or something? Are you, are you intentionally getting in your own way? Because sometimes it's like, 
I'm worried or I'm, I'm anxious about the next level or the next stage. And so sometimes self-sabotage will show up to, to protect your comfort, your sense of stability and security, or your, your comfort in complacency. Because complacency is comfortable, right? You don't, you don't have to challenge yourself or, or work or push yourself. That's not necessary. And so this is just highlighting, don't let yourself get in your own way with whatever it is you want. Or don't let fear sit in the driver's seat. That's not, that's not what you want steering the ship. It can be there, it can hang out, it can have a seat at the table just to make sure you're not making decisions from that space. Because that could be what's causing self-sabotage and like, oh, I'm going to hold myself back because that's more comfortable. So you have to be careful with that. Because sometimes the hope is like, I hope this doesn't work out so that I can remain where I am and I don't have to level up. The, the, so figure out, figure out where you're at with this. And then the outcome of the month is crazy town. This is the moon. The moon is really ungrounded. The moon is like... There's uncertainty, there's a lack of stability, there's a lack of clarity, right? And I, I think it's because you're, you're in the middle of like building and constructing with this five of wands, you know, taking risks. And so it's kind of like a month is a short amount of time. So by the time you even take risks and start rebuilding, it's like the things are not going to be concrete. So go into May really gently because a lot of things are going to be tentative, if it, if you will. They're not going to be completely solidified. Don't expect them to be completely solidified. Don't put pressure on yourself for them to be completely solidified. Relax into all of that and, and don't fight the current with the moon because that, that simply won't work. It'll make you feel even crazier if you try to fight this. If you're experiencing a lot of how is this going to work, you want to go back into feeling, meditation, the feeling of I'm really stable, I'm really secure, what you have going on in your subconscious. Go back into that often. Let's go into the timeline. This is the first quarter of May. We have the sun, vitality. I actually think you start off May really energized, wanting to like make things happen, get things done, get things moving, make some changes potentially, or just enjoy yourself a little bit more. It seems like there's, there's an energetic pickup at the beginning of the month. The second quarter is the Two of Wands, same card that we had here. So it's like, what what is your game plan? Even if it's just to integrate some good habits into your life. It, it doesn't have to be groundbreaking. It doesn't have to be rocket science. It can be really simple. Just create some type of map for yourself. Like, what are some things that you would like to see see change or that you would like to evolve into. This is a good month to do that. It's almost like there's another, um, it, this is, <laughs> it's almost like a January reading where it's like, yes, dabble, take a risk, try it out, set the goal, reevaluate, you know? And so this month I'm getting, you might want to pay extra close attention to what goals are you now setting for yourself? Maybe realign that or adjust them in whatever ways make sense. Because that's one of the things with goals is like you can you can move the needle and also adjust like where you're aiming as you go so that you can stay in alignment with yourself rather than if you ignore your goals or leave them alone, it's like you're kind of not aiming at anything or you might be forgetting about where you're aiming or need to readjust where you're aiming. So take some time for that. I'm getting it's important. Third quarter, we have the three of cups. Connection is a source of wisdom right now. I think for many people, it's either an abundance or a deficiency around connection. Too much or not enough. That contrast, wherever you might be living in that in that realm, that's what's teaching you. So this would be a good time to reach out to friends, check in with them, how are they doing, 
you know, when's the last time you felt really connected? How can you create that feeling for yourself regardless of circumstances, right? What, what is it that satisfies that? And know that you are not alone. You're not alone. It's easy, it's easy to experience aloneness, but that, that's not the reality of it. Okay, fourth quarter, we have the King of Knives. So independence, free thinking. This is like you're going to do it your way. I think by the end of the month, you're just kind of like, I need to get really clear on what my way really looks like and what that feels like and then lean into that fully. I think there's a lot of self-trust that's happening here and it could be coming from like your past successes because that's where the evidence really comes from. Let's do a three card pick. You're welcome to pick a card, any card, ask a question, whatever you're needing in this moment. Card number one, the hermit. So you have to get the clarity inside of yourself. It's not actually going to come from the outside world. You have to get quiet enough to hear it. So whatever your question is or whatever, whatever you're like seeking wisdom on, it's not going to come from asking people. It's not going to come from consulting friends. It's not going to come from thinking about it for 12 hours a day. That's not going to do jack. So what you need to do is... And I've said this before, like go sit in a chair and in silence or take a shower and do or do dishes or go, you know, exercise. Do something that can either put you in a meditative state or just outright meditate so that you can access your own wisdom because that that's where you're going to find it. Card number two, we have the six of wands victory. This is the aha Yes, I've done it. Achievement. This is a this is a yes card. So if you're wondering yes or no, this is a yes. Like things are still moving in your favor, but but you've gotta you've gotta relax into the knowingness of that. Card number three, we have the four of swords. So are you burning yourself out? Are you needing extra rest? Are you what what are you doing like too much of? Because there might be a need to like lay off a little bit or take your foot off the gas pedal. That's also what's coming up here as well. Wherever you might be with this, it's just reminding yourself to not not do it so intensely is the main thing that's coming from this card. So you can you can take a chill pill or you don't have to go so hard. You don't have to be so forceful. You can actually let the situation breathe. That That's what I'm getting here. And don't ignore your body. That's another thing coming up here. Thank you so much for joining me today, everybody. I hope you've enjoyed this video. Don't forget to subscribe, turn on notifications if you want to know when I put out new readings. And don't forget to sign up for my newsletter, which is down in the description box below. You'll get a free dealing with family meditation and you'll also get readings sent to your inbox as well as other information on all sorts of good stuff that I put out. If you would like to know which decks I used in this reading, they're all listed in the description box. If you need to work with me, go to onyxhealing.com and I will see you beautiful people later. Have a good one. Bye-bye.